welcome back to the Glam Fam. I'm so excited that you're here and that you're choosing to spend this time with me and hang out. This is going to be part two of the video that premiered last week, which was the wet set tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how I brush out my wet sets into the page boy style. A lot of it does have to do with how my hair is cut. That video will be linked below in the description box. So underneath this beautiful silk scarf is a head of sponge rollers. So if you're interested in just seeing how I cultivate and brush out my wet sets, please come hang out with me. is not going to be super fancy it's actually very basic if you follow me on Instagram you have already seen some of the behind the sneaks that I like to put out there over on my IG stories if you have not started following me on IG all of my handles will be in the description box below I'd love for you to come over there and hang out with me and become part of the glam fam over there as well if you want to see more videos like this make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notifier I think I'm just gonna start doing this I think I'm gonna start dancing when I talk about the bell notifier I don't know <laughs> hit the bell notifier so you always know when something premieres and you never feel left out. <laughs> so there's not much to this tutorial today. So we're gonna jump and bounce right into it. I'm going to be sharing a couple of the products that I'm using that I really feel help me when I'm doing my brush outs and hopefully can help you. But the first product is the Pureology. This is a soft molding hairspray. They call it their soft finish hairspray. Really what you're looking for is a hairspray that's going to allow you to still manipulate the hair. It doesn't completely set it, it just kind of holds the hair in place, but would still allow you to run a brush through it so that you can make your curls stronger, change them, depending on how things are shaping up, no pun intended. The second hairspray that I use is the Bedhead TG Masterpiece. Now this one is a Stronghold hairspray. This is your finishing spray. It adds beautiful shine and hold to combat the elements, so to speak, in the atmosphere in which we live in. I also like to use the bed head up front. This is the beautiful pomade. It's a lighter hold pomade. If you have thicker or coarser hair, you might want something a little bit heavier than what I have here in the up front. The up front is more for fine to medium textured hair. Of course, brushes are going to be aiding me in getting my hairstyle the way I want it. So I have my trusty Denmark, my Redken teasing nylon bristle comb, and then my actual Cleopatra teasing rat tail comb. If you wanna learn a little bit more about the products that I'm using and why I love them so much, please make sure to check the video in the description box that talks all about my hair tools, um, cause I go into a lot more depth. And usually in these tutorials, when I'm breezing through things, I'm not gonna go into as much depth with them um, or about them specifically. So you might wanna check that out. So underneath this scoff are da -da, da -da, the sponge rollers. So I went ahead and I set my hair last night in sponge rollers. Again, if you want to see my techniques and how I set my hair, please make sure you watch last week's video. It will also be in the description box just to make things really easy for you. And I know I keep saying that over and over again, but I do want to make life easy for you guys. So I have a hairnet on top that I'm going to be taking off. And I do keep all my sponge rollers in just like in a, a basic acrylic little um, box. I do use bobby pins to hold these sponge rollers on the top of my head so that I don't get a dent. As far as sitting underneath a dryer, it does take about an hour to dry the hair and I just did not have time for it that night. So I did sleep in this set that I'm taking out currently. I always start at the back. It doesn't really matter where you start taking out your hot rollers, whatever is comfortable for you. I do suggest holding on to the hair and unwinding the hair from the sponge roller instead of just yanking the sponge roller out of your hair. I know that you can pretty much do it any way you want, but this is how I reduce the amount of frizz. And because I do a lot of hot sets with my hair, I just am in the habit of unrolling it. And I think that it just looks better in my opinion. Now, sometimes they do get stuck and I have to yank and pull a little bit, but look at this. Alright, 
so we're nearing the end. I'm taking out my last three. And the reason I've slowed things down is if you watched last week's tutorial, you will see that this one is actually rolled in differently than the others. So you're gonna see this one goes in and then this one goes in, kind of creating the shape of a heart. That's to help cultivate the S wave. Something I cannot stand about sponge rollers though, and maybe you guys have the same problem, is the handles come off like bleh. So if you have the same problem with your sponge rollers, please share in my pain and put it in the comments thread so that I can know. But they are all out. And we have some beautiful Shirley Temple hair right now. Okay, so what I like to do with my wet set, um, which is different than my hot sets, and I promise that I'm going to be doing a hot set versus wet set tutorial here very soon, but I do like to run my hair through my curls, which is something I don't do during a hot set. Wet sets sit completely differently than a hot set because the product that you use and how you set your hair may literally changes the structure. So the curls are actually more resilient and they stay a lot better than what they do in a hot set. So I'll go into more in depth about that when I do create the tutorial um, of hot set versus wet sets. But I take my fingers, I kind of rake them through my curls. It'll be easier to brush out. And I do that all over. This is kind of a cute look. I don't know, maybe I should go out of the house like this. I don't know, I don't know, what do you guys think? So now that I've raked my fingers through my hair, I'm going to go and make sure that my part is really straight. So I do mention parting your hair according to the way that you want it to lay during your brush out when you're setting your hair. But sometimes you've gotta fix it even after you take out your sponge rollers. And then I'm gonna use my comb to brush through this top layer pretty much all along the roots. I'm gonna use this comb to brush all along my root area because what this is going to do is smooth the hair around the root area. And you want that to be smooth. You don't want it to be kinky. You don't want it to be broken apart. You, all, you want it to be very uniform, especially if you are trying to create a page boy look out of your wet sets. Now that that's done, I will be going in with my Denman brush and I'm really just going to start focusing at the end of my hair and brushing it around my thumb. This is really going to help shape the sausage roll. I call it a sausage roll. It's probably not the nicest terminology considering that it's far superior to a sausage roll. Um, but that's what I call it. And you're gonna do that all around your head. And I like to use my hand to smooth down and kind of make sure that all the hair is staying uniform as I'm going towards the end of my hair where it meets the curl. The reason I do this is also to emphasize the bevel of a page boy. Now I mentioned at the very beginning of this tutorial that my hair is cut in a vintage cut. There's more details about that in the description box. So if you're interested in how my hair is cut and why it seems to cultivate this style so easily, please make sure you check that out, especially if that's something that you wanna do in your vintage journey because I'm going to tell you that it really makes a huge difference. I'm gonna use my molding hairspray and I'm gonna lightly spray what I have creating right now. I'm switching brushes to my nylon teasing comb it's like a teasing brush, but I find that it just really rakes through the hair beautifully, but keeps the hair together. And when you're working with a wet set, brushing and brushing and brushing and more brushing is key. All right, I'm gonna switch to this other side, doing the same thing, brushing through the end of my hair wrapping it around my thumb. You might find that there's a little bit of Christmas to the Christmas crispness <laughs> to the hair. And then 
just brush it out. That's why I always start at the ends and then go up through the shaft of the hair. Because you really kind of want to knock out anything that's tangly towards the bottom. And you can determine, you know, where you really want to start. If you want to start in the back, if you want to start on the sides. Personally, I like starting on the sides and going around towards the back. I don't usually start at the back and work around to the front. There's a bit of a tangle on that one. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on my S wave. And I'm going to go ahead and brush this through. Wrapping it around the thumb. And you can see it's already kind of doing it by itself. And then I'm going to use my fingers to help mold it. I'm going to use a toothless duckbill clip to help hold things in place. Now I will say this, for a hot set, making an S-Wave is so much easier with a hot set than it is a wet set. So I'm just holding this S-Wave here while I insert another duckbill clip. And then to flatten this just a little bit against my head, I'm going to use my bow tie clips, which I picked up at Ulta. And I'm going to use my molding spray. I'm going to spray that down a little bit. And then I'm going to start working on this little curl right around the front of my face. Because I do want it to dip in, like, like so, so that you can actually see the S wave and then I'll spray it. When it comes to brushing out the hair, it's just a manner of molding and shaping the hair into submission and in the way that you want it to go. Your hair will have a set curl pattern that it will want to go into. So it's just kind of about guiding it into the specific place that you want it to be. does help to have a mirror where you can look behind your head, um, but since I'm filming, I don't have that. So I'm going to hold up my little handheld mirror. A page boy was not meant to look separated. It was meant to have this uniformity that went around the entire head. Now, if you do live in a humid climate, you can always put an invisible hairnet on um, to help hold the hair if it needed it. Personally, I find that my wet sets hold up better in the humidity, so I don't use an invisible hairnet unless it's raining. And it's not raining today, it's actually very pretty. So I will not be using a hairnet. You can also use your fingers to help manipulate um, the curls, they respond really, really well to hand play. Please don't take that dirty. Are we not doing phrasing? <laughs> and now I'm going to remove these clips very, very gently. You don't want to do it fast. If you do it fast and you yank at it, it means you might have to reset your S wave. So just take your time removing the clips out of your hair. No. No rushing. Hair is not about yanking and pulling. Save that for the romp in the room. So once you have your hair to a place where you're happy with it, you're ready to rock and roll and get out the door, now we're going to use our final setting spray. Put the tissue over my coffee and then just start spraying. And do not be afraid to use a lot of hairspray. I use a can of hairspray a month, this one in particular. And then the last thing I do is I use my rat tail comb to help me tuck this hair behind my ear so that it's nice and clean. And then sometimes I will go in with my finger and my thumb and reshape the curl by my ear. 
so that it's really nice and lifted, sculpted and pretty. And I'll take my molding hairspray, because believe me, it doesn't need any more of that hardball hairspray. And I'll just give it a nice light coat. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. Please make sure you give it a thumbs up, um, especially if you like it and you want to see more vintage hair tutorials in the future. If you haven't subscribed, please come be part of the Gleam fam. Hang out with me once a week. I post new videos every Friday at 4 o'clock, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notifier uh, so that you don't miss out when a video premieres. Let me know if you're interested in doing premieres live with me. That's something that YouTube has opened up as a feature where when the video premieres, I can actually be sitting there watching it with you so that if you guys have questions on the spot, I'm there to answer them. If that's something that you would love to see, please put it in the comments section. You know I love hearing from you guys. I hope that you're having a fabulous week. Again, thank you for joining me for this wet set. I love hanging out with you and I hope that it was helpful and that any of the tips that I shared with you guys today can help you streamline your own wet set. Please let me know also what was one of your favorite things to learn. Sometimes I go very in depth when it comes to my tutorials because I find that's a really easy way for me to learn. So let me know what was one of the favorite things that you saw in today's video. I will be seeing you guys very soon. I look forward to it. Take care. Make sure you stay kind and glamorous to one another and I will see you all very soon. Get them all nice and loose so that they'll be easier. Hair, ew. <laughs> um,